Okay, picking up from where we just left off, we have added some text in and I just want to show you just some ways to make some modifications. Okay, so if we want to change this text, say we decide that that's not the tagline we want, there's a couple ways we can do that. So let's select our text tool. Okay, and by putting your cursor over top of the text, you can click and drag um, through that and that will select that text. Okay, that's one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it is here on our our text layer. Remember if we click here we'll get our um, dialog box for layer style. If we click here we'll be able to rename our, our layer and if we click here on the T it's going to it's going to sorry double click it's going to select all the text in that layer. Okay so there I can now make a change to say I want it to say island oops island paradise okay um, and then to uh, apply that change, I can either click here on my move tool just by changing tools or click on this checkbox or hit enter on my um, keyboard. Now that um, on a Mac, there is a return and an enter. Return won't do it, but enter will. And I'm not sure on a PC, I'll have to experiment with that. But uh, either way, if you need to, you can just click here on the checkbox. Okay. All right. Let's uh, align this a little bit. Now you'll notice that I'm getting these like pink lines that are just kind of giving me a little bit of like uh, um, alignment help. Okay, these guides. Um, if those are not showing up for you, I think they're under um, view and they're under extras. Okay, and I think if you turn extras on or off, um, or I think you can also do it here under show uh, smart guides. Okay, and these will. Um, I think extras turns them all off, like all of these extra um, tools off. So just make sure that that's checked and then show what you want to show, which is for this one, smart guides. Okay. And so what's happening here, it means I can align it. So if I want it to align to the center of my screen, it shows me that that is the center. Okay. Um, I can also left align it or right align it to other objects within my, um, my uh, composition. Okay. Right now it's aligning to the left edge of this flower, right? So it'll pick different objects if you're trying to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna to align to the center of my screen here, of my um, layout, and I want this text to go all the way to the left and the right. Now we learned uh, previously in Illustrator about some terms, okay? Um, terms like tracking and letting. We're going to change the tracking of this. Okay, so uh, let me go open up my window, um, and I'm gonna to go to my, so it's, going to be in character um, and paired with the character is a paragraph style. So when I open up the character, I should get both. Yeah, right here. So character and paragraph. So I'm going to pull these off of here because these are the sort of the two that we want to use for uh, for all of these. Um, oops. Um, all of these. Yeah, okay. So um, all the tools for this uh, exist here. So I want to change my tracking. Um, I'm going to double click my um, text layer to select that text. Um, and then you can see that we have, similar to what we had in Illustrator, we had some controls. Okay, so we can do things like we can change our tracking. Say I want to change our tracking to 100. Um, and then I can sort of align that. And um, I can change my, if we had more lines of text, I could change my letting. I could also change the size um, or the font, whatever I need to do. That happens in here. We also have in Photoshop a function that we didn't have in Illustrator, which is called faux bold and faux italic. Sometimes a text or a font doesn't have a bold option. In Photoshop, um, you actually have the option to kind of create this faux uh, version of the font and that's actually pretty good it does a, a pretty decent job of um, kind of mimicking what the um, font would look like if it were uh, bolded or um, italicized there are a bunch of other um, options here um, which you can experiment with but these are I find fairly useful sometimes when you're trying to find a font um, and you don't have the option you need you can use these Okay. Um, all right so I'm gonna bump this up to let's say I don't know, wait, 150 that looks okay to me and then I'm going to align that to the center of my screen, and that looks pretty good. Now, I also mentioned I changed this to this dark green, which is a little hard to read here. So we have a couple of options. Um, first, of course, I can change my, my color, okay, and that's going to update here. Um, but another way to do that, say I wanted to keep this uh, for whatever reason, I wanted to keep it black. Um, and I wanted to then uh, make some modifications. I could fill it in like I did here with the other color or, or um, 
fill it with uh, a gradient. But if something else I can do is I can use this um, layers style palette to affect the way it looks. So we've got a number of items here. So let's take a look at um, color overlay. So let's go to the color overlay. I'm going to click here uh, on this um, tool and it's going to give me some options. So it says blend mode normal and right now it's set to gray. So let's pick, I don't know, um, like a kind of a vibrant blue and it's going to update my font or my text to have kind of this blue overlay. Okay, um, if I decided I wanted this to be a gradient, I could do the same thing here by changing my gradient colors. Okay, I could pick the colors that I want, similar to what we did previously, right? And then um, whatever difference, whatever you decided you want that to be, okay, and that will now be an overlay over my black text. Okay, notice if I do something like this, so let's say I decided that I wanted, oops, if I wanted this to be a color overlay and I decided that I wanted it to be that, you know, that vibrant blue like this. Okay, and I say, okay, if I did change my text color here, that's not going to affect anything because the overlay supersedes the text color. Okay, if I then get rid of my, so I say I clear my um, layer style, so clear layer style, then it's going to show my original colors. Okay, so just keep that sort of stuff in mind. Okay, that's still pretty hard to read. Um, so what can I do about that? Well, let's take a look. Let's make it uh, that green that I wanted. Okay, and I'm gonna make it like a kind of a, kind of a bright grassy green, something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in a couple of uh, effects to just give it a little bit of separation. So let's go down to this drop shadow. Now notice we've got effects, we've got a color overlay. As soon as I click on this drop shadow, it's gonna add here um, that I've got a drop shadow added to my effects. Okay, I'm gonna go my drop shadow, and then um, I'm gonna play sort of with the the numbers here. I'm going to bring this down to uh, say 35. I'm going to change my angle here so that I can see it. Notice that the angle is like where the light is coming from. So if this is your object, where is the light coming from? It's coming from about that angle. So you can see the shadow is off to the right and down. If I moved it you know, this way, the shadow then will be updated to be kind of on the left. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to bring my distance slider down. I'm going to bring my spread slider down. I'm going to bring my size slider down. And that looks fairly decent. Okay, maybe I'll bring that past up a little bit, but that's okay. That adds a bit of separation. I'm also going to add um, a very light stroke around my, um, uh, around my um, text. Now notice what's happening. I've got this set as an inside stroke. So it has actually filled the entire text inside those lines okay i'm going to bring these down just so you can see what's happening i use my arrow key to bring these numbers down see what's happening there so when i've got a four pixel stroke inside the lines it actually fills it all with white i bring bring this down you'll see what's happening it's filling that inside of the the um the bounds of the letters okay what i actually want to do is change that to an outside stroke um, and then that gives me that separation that I want with the shadow, uh, the drop shadow behind it, and that looks pretty decent. I might bring my opacity down. I don't know that looks a little bit kind of harsh like that. So maybe I bring my opacity down just so it's a little bit less um, kind of, um, you know, intense. And maybe my size can come down to one. I'll bring my opacity back up to say 75%. That looks decent. Okay, and that just gives us a bit of separation. Okay. Um, all right, click OK there, and that looks pretty good. All right, so moving along, well, we have a couple more things to do, and these are, again, effects. And I mentioned previously that some of the effects um, require really uh, specific um, numbers when we're, when we're adding these effects in. And it's fine whether, you know, we're going to try this just to see what it does, but there are you know literally thousands of effects that you can create in Photoshop and lots of different ways to do them. Uh, I mentioned when I talked about this um, th uh, this pineapple duplicate when we set this to uh, an overlay, the effect that it had. So much of it depends on what the image is. So like how these pixels interact with what be what's behind them really depends on the color of the pixels, the color of the pixels behind, and the effect. So like I say, there's lots of um, sort of uh, modify modifications and, and, and playing with things that you can do. Now a way to a nice way to experiment with this is I'm gonna get rid of my character palette here. Uh, is something called adjustment layers. Now these are available right here. So let's go to my flower layer 
And now adjustment layers are right here, if I this little um, half white and half black circle. If I click on that, it's going to open up. Um, oh, it's a little hard to see. There's a, a drop down of um, different um, adjustment layers. And adjustment layers do exactly that. They adjust uh, the, the graphics that they are being applied to. Okay. Um, there's another way to get them. I think it was under uh, layer. And then here, new adjustment layer. And this list here is exactly the same list as you see. So brightness, con contrast, levels, curves, exposure, etc., is the same list that you get here. Okay. Right. Brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure. Um, and then there, there are actually some other ones that have been added here. Okay. So let's say I want to add. Um, there is a, let's go to hue saturation. There's, I mean, play with these, see what they do, but let's go to hue saturation. Okay, and now I'm on, I'm on this um, flower layer, right? This is going to affect the flower. So let's drag this this way and you can see what's happening. It's actually affecting everything. So what's happening is, it, it, notice it's not affecting Hawaii. Okay, and that's because this will affect everything below it in the stack. Okay, it'll affect all the layers below it in the stack. To change that, see, I only want to change this flower. I can click on this button here. Okay, there's another way to do this. I think if you right click here, I think, and said, uh, maybe I click on here. I forget, I forget how to do it the other way. Anyways, the, the way that I will do it is to click here on this thing here, and that's going to say, now apply these um changes only to the layer below it so watch what happens here when i click on this little this little icon okay i click this and it moved over okay and it shows this little arrow which means now it only applies to this layer and see when i drag this now it's only changing the flower because this has been applied to the layer below it okay so i can now do things like change the saturation Okay, I can desaturate completely. I can change the lightness and brightness. Lots of things I can do. Okay, I'm going to cancel this uh, and delete that layer. And we're going to try something else. We're going to do, there are, like I said, there are lots of things that you can do here. Let's try, let's close that. And let's go to, I think it's Windows Adjustments here. In my adjustments, I can actually click on, for example, this is the hue saturation. Um, let's try uh, curves. Okay, this is a curves adjustment. And this is this does exactly the same thing. If I go down here and I go here to curves, okay, it does the same thing, gives me the same drop down. So just different ways to, to get the same tools. And I can now drag this up and it brightens everything up. If I drag it down, it darkens everything. I can also click and drag another point on here, which this is why it's called curves. Okay, it adjusts all the layers. Again, if I only want to affect a layer below where I'm working, I can click on this and it only affects the layer. I've managed to make two of these. Let me get rid of this one. Okay, and let's double click this and affect it. Okay, so when I do this, this is now only going to affect the one below it. As soon as I, right now it's affecting everything, right? But if I click this guy here, it only affects this flower, right? So that's going to change to brightness. On that platter. Okay, great. I'm gonna get rid of that. We don't need that. Um, so that's again one of the things that we can do. Um, and there's a few different ways to do all these things. Uh, I'm not gonna go through any more. Uh, you can you can experiment and and see what else is out there. See what other um, tools and, and treatments you can create. The last thing we'll do before we wrap this up is I'm gonna turn on our postage stamp here. Okay. Now that is quite dark. Uh, I mentioned previously. That we can turn down the opacity okay and remember it's not the visibility and it's not the transparency but the opacity of an object by dragging this um, slider down okay you can also explicitly put in a number if i hit five zero and hit enter it'll go to 50 percent and if i go to my move tool and hit any number on my my number pad so eight will make it 80 percent two will make it 20 percent five will make it 50 percent and if i want a number like say 15, I've just got to type a little quicker, 1-5, and it'll make it 15. 2-2 two, two will make it 22, okay? All right, and so the last thing I just want to mention, I'll a couple seconds here, but I can also drag um, some effects. So say I want to take the effects that I have on this Island Paradise here and affect Hawaii with the same thing. I can hold Option on my keyboard, Alt on a PC, and drag that down, and it's going to copy those effects 
to this layer okay so say i wanted that and i didn't maybe i didn't want that uh, overlay i have some control there okay give it a shot save a jpeg put it on your website